I did not want to disrespect and start too early. Um, so we're just getting started here. Again, I don't think we got it. We just kind of thank some of the people that have been working on it here so far. Joe Dexter, uh, just a lot of work, Janet Street, uh, et cetera. So I don't think I got too much farther uh, in this here. I'm not going to read this to you, Lee. You can read. And, uh, uh, but you can kind of see what we're doing there. Uh, the next page, page four, gets in another project goal of providing welcome spaces for families to gather. You can start to see some of the renderings there. And I see some of those renderings, you know, I kind of go, oh, wow, that looks pretty cool. And, uh, and uh, we hope that uh, it serves that goal. Again, family worship, historical preservation, again, a lot of discussion here on the artwork that's in this sanctuary already and preserving that as well. The youth room, kitchen, dining, and hospitality, uh, all those things that is goal number two. Goal number three, um, you know, and this is a biggie here that really is, we've spent a lot of time on um, over the last few weeks here, renovating God's house for another century. Okay, what does that mean? Well, you know, uh, that's where Joe Dexter has been crawling and swirling around all over, you know, trying to see what we have, what we can salvage, what we can keep, what we don't have to replace, and then what we do have to do. And uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing. It's good basically going through and getting the infrastructure of this building here, you know, up to, up to date. Um, you sit there and you kind of go and do a remodeling and leave a bunch of old garbage behind. You know, well, yeah, it's cheaper that way, but is it, is it, is it, is it going to be cheaper down the road? And by doing all these things here, um, you know, we can have a much more energy efficient, much more efficient overall in everything that we do and something that's going to be here for us for, and, and way beyond me, right? Way beyond me and hopefully in, you know, another hundred years. Um, but we want to do a good job with everything that we're doing there. Um, I, I know that's another thing that we're kind of working on is, um, you know, trying to see if there's some some credits there we can get for the energy efficiency that uh, this building and the whole the whole facility is going to be having for us. Floors, ceilings, safety. Let's kind of go through the structural repairs to come uh, to compromise attic joists. You know, I want to get into all the thing, but up in the up in the up in the attic, you know, this looks like this is the roof. No, there's another space above what you see here, and there's different trusses and different things like that up there. HVAC, different pieces have been put in there, and back in the day, there's some of those trusses were carved up. They are cut. Okay, so we're fixing some of those things, bringing them back again uh, to the way it was. So that's what we mean by structural repairs uh, to compromise attic joists including safety catwalk in the in the attic. There's something going up through here. You gotta be walking in different places here to get to the lights and the electrical and all that kind of stuff. And you're walking on these rafters. <laughs> and if you miss, you're coming through, okay? And we have some of our staff going up there and volunteers going up there and, you know, we're doing some work up there. And um, we're, we're gonna try to have a catwalk there. I don't like that word, but a walking path there uh, to be able to walk along there safely. Um, so that's something that we're going to be doing here as well. Complete removal of the sanctuary ceiling. This whole ceiling, the, the acoustic papaya will be going underneath there is plaster. Plaster is on the old wood lath, all that type of stuff. All that's going to be coming down and uh, going to be replaced. It's a big, a big, big item. And again, parts of it are we have places up here that are falling down. You can see different tiles that have fallen down underneath there. It's not good. So if we're going to be building on that and having it where it's pleasing acoustically in here, we've got to replace that. Um, so we're doing that. Um, stabilization of the sanctuary subfloor to improve sound, slope, and durability. And again, we're having a flattened area up in here. Going back here, carpets. Um, Hardwood is coming off, um, new subfloor put down, and new flooring. Some of that's so that the new flooring is warranted then versus, you know, on something that's maybe a little less stable. And we like to hear it. Are you walking softly right now? Because, because, I don't do that very well. Yeah, I know. But uh, usually it, it squeaks, you know, and, and part of it is the 100 year old building that probably was 
pounded in with nails, you know, and the nails have probably fatigued and he loosened and that's why you have the floor, the floor has a little spring to it. Good for basketball court, you know, you really can jump a little higher, but we don't need to do that here in the sanctuary. So that's going to be a big piece of it that's going to be, that's it's going to be stabilized and complete abatement of the hazardous material to move asbestos adhesives in the sanctuary. And again, some of it isn't so much all the, it, it's the, it's the adhesives that hold that tile up against the plaster and all those little pucks, they put little spots, like four little pucks on each of those tiles roughly, and that's all asbestos. So that's got to be all collected and, uh, and, and, and taken care of before the workers can come in here. You got, we got to make a safe work environment for the workers, got to get that asbestos out of there. That's what has to happen. Accessibility and code, um, install code compliant railings in the balcony, improve all restrooms to comply with ADA accessibilities, universal changing tables for caretakers lounge and assist with elderly care and special needs. You can kind of see a picture, of, um, a depiction of the railing there that we're looking at as well. If you go to the next page, this is what we've been working on here all along. Again, um, we, that all came together this last week and we had a, a review of it on December 6th. And you can kind of see here, you can get into all the detail. You can see the one column here is the April estimate that we shared with the congregation back uh, in April and then the bid on the right hand side and um, and so you can kind of see where we are at there. Some are higher, some are lower, um, and then if you take it all the way down through uh, to the bottom, we're at six million. Uh, some of the things in there that are interesting to me um, is uh, con construction contingencies. There's always gonna be something, a problem during a project, and um, um, there's 10% is what we put in there, and you can see it's a pretty big number. Is that, I'm having a hard time following those lines across. Is that 346? Ryan, yeah. Pastor, is that 346? $346,000 uh, for contingency in that six million. Wouldn't that be great if all the hard work that Joe and everybody put together here, we don't have any contingencies, anything extra, right? when we can save that 346, then make that 5.7, that would be awesome. You know, so that's what we're hoping for. But, uh, and, uh, but that's in there. Um, you can see all the different design fees. These are all things that we had contracts with before. Back here on page two, when we made those approvals with growth, um, made approvals with Myron, those are all those, those fixed costs that are gonna be a part of that uh, as well. You can see some of the owner, sh owner furnishings uh, right now, uh, liturgical furnishings and design, 169,000. AV system, 200,000. Worship seating, 161. The pipe organ, that's what we had talked about before, 891. Asbestos abatement, 32,000. Artistic interior painting, 69,000. Owner maintenance uh, projects, these are other things that we've talked about. We've talked about water coming down off the roof out here into the gutters and then down into the downspouts and then that water goes across the sidewalk and stuff like that right now that's one of the projects that we were hoping that we could get fixed um, um, and we'll do that later but we wanted to make that as a part of the project and there's other i can't remember all the other owner maintenance projects if any of the guys in here gals in here remember some of those i'd appreciate it but um, all together then, those are things that we have to take care of uh, ourselves. Um, and then there's some alternates down the bottom, again, for the subfloors, um, and then the youth dining furnishing, $75,000 there as well. All that other construction stuff up there on top, you can see the general trades, 872,000, windows and glass, 59,000, drywall, plaster, that's that whole thing up in here. And, and throughout the whole building where there's drywall and plaster necessary, um, 334,000, it's a big one. Tile and underlayment, 70,000. Suspended ceiling, is that down in the basement? I'm assuming, uh, uh, if Joe was here, he'd know. Uh, 57,000, the flooring, 168,000. Painting and wall covering, 69,000. Plumbing, 77,000. We're very happy about that one. We had 185,000 estimate. It came in at 77,000. We're pretty tickled with that. Same with the HVAC. 
700,000. Electrical, 558, pretty close to the estimate. So again, it's a lot of those construction contractor things, about $3 million. Um, so that's that. And then the last page here, I think is the last page. Um, you know, again, there's the schedule. Um, right now, what the contractors are doing is locking in or, or ma you know, making sure before before we sign a contract that are you are you good with that number? Is that right? Did, uh, and if there's some things we want to clarify, make sure that they know about that needs to be done with that. Make sure they didn't miss anything. We don't want to go into a, a project where all of a sudden the contract goes, oh, I didn't see that. I didn't know that. You know, and that's what we're trying to do is make sure it's crystal clear going into it. Um, and uh, they're doing that type of work right now. Um, um, but then, you know, we're trying then to be pushing everything forward to starting this thing right after Easter and being completed. Looks like they're, they're saying dedication day, they're saying Thanksgiving in that time frame. I was always saying Christmas before, but if we can get it done sooner, that'd be awesome. Um, those are some things there. Uh, down here on the bo bottom here, showing kind of where we are financially and the, the uh, commitments we've had and what we've received. And, and again, we love to see even more. Now is a great time uh, to see what we have here, and now is a great time to put even more uh, towards the project. Not only your treasure, but your time and your talents. And we can talk a little bit about that here too. Um, over here on this part here, we. Uh, we're looking for volunteers now. That's the next thing. We made some commitments, the things that we're going to do, like these pews, we're, we're going to take them out of here. We're not going to have a contractor that we're going to do these. What's that? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but, you know, taking these pews out, you know, taking, you know, all the, the chairs and the, just everything, moving it out of here. When are we going to do that? Right after Easter, right? That's what we're going to do. So, it, that's going to be when it, the rubber really meets the road for volunteer uh, help. Um, but there's a lot of other things. The 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 old uh, audio uh, booth there, uh, we can take that. We're planning on taking that thing down right after Christmas. Okay, start taking it down. Need some volunteers for that. Um, down the basement, taking the, the the ceiling down and all that stuff. And uh, we're going to start kind of looking for people. And we got a lot of people in our congregation that are very talented. Um, and um, But now we got to organize everybody for that. That's the next thing that we really got to work on. I'd love to be able to see a couple people that would like to be leaders of that. And just take one project at a time. Lead that. Get four or five people. Let's go get it done on a weekend or what have you. And some of those other things are going to take a little bit more time. Uh, but I love to see people that have those volunteer um, and leadership um, uh, skills, and then guys that just want to come with a hammer and a sledgehammer and start ripping apart. My brother and I, my brother Roger, used to get old houses and he'd convert them into duplexes, and we were really good at wrecking things. We really were good at it. We couldn't put it back together as easy, but uh, it was always kind of fun to rip that stuff and get it, get a mall in there and tear some things down. We're going to need people that can do that. We're going to need people that are going to wheelbarrow stuff out and put it in the dumpster. We're going to need all that stuff. It's going to be grunt work. It's going to be some some people that have some electrical skills, some plumbing skills, all that type of stuff. we got a big list of that, and that's going to save us a, a good chunk of money uh, to do that. And if we can't do it, then we're going to have to hire it. But uh, we think we have the people here that can do it. I mean, when we did the school project over there and the amount of volunteers that we had and putting cabinets together and, and moving things out and bringing it on in, it was awesome. And um, there's opportunities there. So keep that in mind. Okay. So Ryan has a list here of all those opportunities. Take a look at that. And we're going to have to start working on that real soon, probably right after Christmas here. Okay. So that's all I have here. I apologize for starting soon. For some of you guys that just came in, I don't think you missed much from, from, from what I've been saying here. But, but if um, uh, you have any questions, now will be the time to ask those questions. We'd like to see where you're at, what you think of the work that we've done so far. Any questions? Yes, Gary.
Sure. So I don't know if you all heard that, but uh, he said, um, do we have a buyer for the hardwood flooring or the pews or any of that stuff? We don't have one right now. Uh, is that a good idea? It's a good idea. And uh, we'll see what we can do uh, to, to, to do it. The issue is going to be on a lot of the stuff is the timing, right? It's going to be the timing. We have to work real hard at that. But uh, Gary, we'll, we'll start taking a look at that. We have not gotten into that yet, but that's a good idea. sure what number you got there. Why don't you show it to me afterwards here? And, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, a lot of that stuff has been done already, though, Gary, as far as getting the bids. We went and took a look at the lists and tried to, you know, you know, look at the ones that are members of ours and stuff like that. And some of them that we've used in the past, um, and they, some of them said, no, we don't have anything to do with this old building here. So, you know, like, and I don't want to name names or anything, but some, some just said, we don't want to have anything to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, we identified those things already as a committee and, and said, we're not letting them bid on this. We're not letting them bid. We can do this. We can do this. And so now we've got to put our money where our mouth is and hopefully everybody can uh, uh, do it. And again, where Ryan's got that list, now it's time for us to start kind of really peddling that out there. And some things are going to be real simple, like this little room right here. And other things are going to be, you know, down in the basement by our vault area. There's some concrete work that we're planning on demoing ourselves so that will be a little bit more difficult a little bit more uh, muscle involved there and uh, a little bit more knowledge too so that will be a little bit more challenging but we're, we're planning on doing as much as we can any other questions yes sir have you thought about a storage facility like putting the pews and things uh, yeah we thought about it you don't want to put them outside Right, we thought about that, and, and that's kind of what we did with the school project too. We put them, you know, I think Scott, you guys probably offered us some some trailers and stuff like that that we put things in and, and stuff like that. But yeah, we're gonna have to look at that or big old storage units and stuff like that, um, the, the cargo uh, units or something. We're gonna have to, but uh, yeah, that's that's something we got to start working and ramping up between here end of the year and April. You know, we got a lot of work there to do in a short period of time. But yes, Pastor.
you have any other questions? Mary, did you get your question? Or you just what? Oh, yeah. something right or uh, you know but uh, but I don't know if you all heard Mary there uh, she said at St. Peter's in Freedom they uh, they chunked up the pews a little bit made it something manageable in a house a big one like this that probably wouldn't fit in my house but yeah yeah so again great idea those are all those ideas and marketing of that and uh, you know I, I, I my, my daughter-in-law does this Facebook marketplace I don't know all that much about it but they do that, and they, 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 they pick up things cheap, and they sell things, you know, as they as they change their decors and stuff like that. And maybe that's something that we can incorporate, too, to try to, to do that. But obviously, offering it to our congregation and our members uh, would, be a, would be first and foremost. Good idea. Anything, any other questions, anybody? Don't be shy. Yes, where? Over here. New pews are in that pricing, right, Pastor? So that's the worship seating 161 088. And you remember, remember what those are going to be, though? The, some of the permanent, <clears throat> excuse me, and portable seating as well, correct? Okay. Yes. So his question was, is, is the renovation, is the moving of that to a, a more, uh, a, a, you know, a different place in the, in the building, a part of this here? And I think Joe Dexter has been kind of leading that group, but Pastor, you've been really involved with that. Can you speak to that? five of your packet it says project goal number two at the top second photograph down you'll see a dapper gentleman leading a bible class in front of the relocated statue of jesus a little hard to see it's a smaller photo but the project concept from our liturgical arts team is that the statue of jesus would be relocated to the location where funeral visitations are held and that way if you look at the, the positioning of Jesus that actually serves a really nice artistic moment it would be placed higher up on a pedestal that's being uh, included in the bid from the Arnold Bracey company same company that's doing the pews and that could even be lit so that we could get some proper lighting on Jesus and get rid of his five o'clock shadow the Relief of the Lord's Supper, which is also near and dear to many, can be relocated to our new archives museum space. We saw that we have a large landing that heads up towards the balcony, and that large landing could be uh, reused for things like the storage of the Spearing Bible, our historic baptismal font, and other sacred artifacts that have carried the history of our congregation. The only item that would be really difficult to relocate and still maintain in-house is our 26-foot tall Rarito's altar. And we are looking at the options for um, uh, either consigning that altar or finding ways that it could be recast and, and reused 
perhaps in a historical society situation. At any rate, the alter would be what we would refer to as decommissioned, that we would work hard not to just send an alter into a 20-yard dumpster. We would find a way that we could honor the history that we've had and also find a place where an alter of that size could be used. It does have some structural difficulties in the alter itself, and the statue also has some restoration needs. We are working with companies that have the ability to do that kind of restoration. We just haven't gotten them to do a full inspection on that because they kind of want to get their – they want to get it off the pedestal and take a close look at it before they can tell us what's involved. But our historical team, Charmaine's on that team, right? You're on that team. We're working hard to make sure that the things that have a lot of significance to them are properly handled and that we don't miss out on opportunities to retain that. I have heard a lot of stories of, well, we used to have beautiful chalices and pyramids, and those all went to some other church. We're trying to take control of that to maintain our congregation system. So it's outlined there on page 5. Any other questions? Mona. Yeah, it's going to be less, and I don't have that right off the top of my head here. But remember, we have the – we're going to have a quiet room, you know, family room over here. Also, another one that's going to look similar to that over in this area here. It's taking up some of that space. Also down the front, you have that number. You do, don't you? I don't do this because I'm trying to take over the project, but because I am the only person that gets paid to actually work on this project. These guys are volunteers that have day jobs. Are you not getting paid? No. We talked about that five years ago. It's – he quits. $475. $475 as drawn in these plans. When they built this building, they said it was $800. It's not $800. $600 becomes uncomfortable in this room right now. So $475 down from $600. But you'll also notice, for instance, if you turn to page 4, project goal number 1. This is why we need a parent's room. I queued Alex up to do that. In project goal number 1, look at the third photograph down of the balcony. Right now you see six banks of 13 chairs. Below those chairs is a wide open musician's plaza, and above those chairs is a wide open – another plaza that's handicap accessible. That would be places where we could locate additional chairs for very large format services such as Christmas and Easter. But they then have to also share space with whatever musicians and other people are serving in worship. Similarly, underneath the balcony, the space from about where Mary is sitting to about where Gordy is sitting to the back of the building is wide open space so that we can finally, as pastors, shake everybody's hand at once. On Christmas, that area could also be filled up with chairs and to do so in a way that's safe rather than stacking chairs sometimes into the aisles and then you get an egress situation. So 475 as drawn could be flexed north of 500, but building inspectors get nervous when buildings of this size have more than 500 people in them because you need extra exit doors. So the fact that we landed at 475 allows us to be code compliant for fire exits. So if we would be a building that's slated to seat 550, we'd need three additional doors, which is problematic. How do we manage that when we still do – do we still get church services of more than 500 people? Sometimes we'll probably see one of our Christmas services more than 500 in two weeks. But we also have the ability to schedule, and now almost every room on our campus will become an off-site worship lounge that will have direct feed from the narthex area to the church basement to the community room to the school commons will all be on this new state-of-the-art live feed system so that you can tune in for as many people as you have on the campus. So 475 engineered for that and then looking for ways to flex beyond that. Does that answer your question? Stay close.
Any other questions? Okay. Well, I know your time is valuable too. We'll stick around here for a while. If you have any other questions personal, uh, just or, or think about something else. But we n number one thing we need you to do is pray for us, pray for the congregation, pray for this project. That's number one, always. Number two, take a look at you know what you see there. See where you can volunteer and help because we could use it. And um, you know, take a look at it. See if you know, end of the year here. If you, I know a lot of you have made commitments. Uh, if you want to make more commitments, maybe some are waiting and seeing what this project was going to be before uh, they made their commitment. Now is the time for that as well. Uh, obviously, you know, a lot of the things there we talk about. What can we do to cut back? Obviously, putting more into it uh, as well and saving uh, where we have to go as far as getting a loan or whatever. Uh, we're all set for that as well. Uh, but, you know, again, now's the time uh, for you to, to, to go all in, you know, on this project. So, and, and talk it up. Um, you know, that's part of it too as a congregation. We can be really positive about everything and we can go the other way. And uh, to me, all the people that worked on this, they put their hearts and souls into this thing. And, uh, and I think now it's time for us to all kind of buy into it and uh, get her going. We're excited about it. We're nervous about it. We need to pray for it. Um, it's going to be a big project. It's going to be a big undertaking, uh, you know, throughout the whole spring and summer uh, as we change. And that's something, too. We'll be moving on out to the commons, you know, to do worship. It's, that's kind of the, the, that's what we've decided there, right, guys? That's what we've decided. And that's what we're going to be doing while this is being under construction. So it's going to be a big, big task. Thanks for all your time. You guys have a great Sunday. We'll stick around here for as long as we have to to answer any questions that you may have. Have a good day.